So I swear the shtick of this channel is not just taking dumps on budget firearms. It's just that when you get a bad one, you got to call it like you see it. And this is a bad one. Most recently, I did a very unflattering review of a Pioneer 5.56 AK. However, the workmanship you're going to see inside this pistol is going to make the folks at Pioneer seem like Swiss artisans by comparison. That's not exaggeration. It's not clickbait. Uh, genuinely is that bad. There are things going on in here that you would not accept from a high point that sells for half the price or the Bryco, Jennings, Jimenez, whatever they're calling themselves now, uh, that sells for one third the price. Again, you, you wouldn't even see that in there. It genuinely is that bad. But before we get to that point, what are we even looking at here? Well, obviously it's a Beretta 92FS clone. It is imported by Rock Island Armory. You see on the manual. However, it's not manufactured by them. It's manufactured by a maker called Daria Arms, right here. The model designation is the Melik or Melik. I don't know how that's pronounced. I don't speak Turkish. It is a Turkish manufacturer. And so this is one that's not particularly well established in the U.S. market. There are some Turkish makers that have established themselves that do produce reasonably good quality at low prices. We're talking about makers like Canik or maybe even TSOS. Uh, this is one that's kind of newer. I've only seen two reviews on this uh, at the time that I looked, at least in English. There are some what I presume are Turkish reviews. Both of those are actually quite positive. I don't know who those channels are. I don't have their names committed to memory. I don't know if they're sponsored or maybe they're just luckier than I am. But in any case, that's really the gist of the background. Uh, on the surface, the pistol itself, it seems fine. Every time I look at kind of a budget pistol, speaking of budget before I move on, actually, these are very, very affordably priced. Uh, they go for right around 300 at the time of this recording, give or take. Uh, so quite affordable. This isn't the only model they produce. They also produce a, a Glock 19 clone. I believe it's Gen 3 compatible. Uh, those are extremely low price. We're talking of like, I've seen them go on sale for as little as 219. So that's kind of the, the budget that we're looking at. But in any case, that's the pistol. So the pistol itself, it seems fine. I, I always look for kind of signs of economizing whenever I look at ultra budget pistols. And there's nothing terribly drastic that I could see on the outside. Yeah, the grips do feel and look a little cheap, more like a toy grade plastic, but I'm assuming that uh, 92 pattern grips of any of any sort would fit if you want to upgrade that. Uh, these are supposed to be so close to the original that parts will interchange. I don't know whether that's actually true, but that's really about it as far as I can tell. Oh, of course, the other kind of budget thing is it only ships with one magazine. That's fairly typical for some of these uh, these budget pistols. They ship with one mag instead of the more customary two. So there's really, outside, can't tell that there's too much of anything wrong with it. Everything is very functional. For instance, you know, function checks, they all completely check out. It's not as smooth as a real Beretta. I do have real Berettas for comparison, but it's all right. Nothing, nothing terribly amiss that you can see on the outside. It's really on the inside where you start seeing things that are really quite remarkable. So I won't keep you in suspense for too much longer. Let's get this thing apart. So it comes apart like a standard Beretta. You push the button on the other side, flip this lever, slide comes off. It's kind of gritty coming off here. That was the first red flag. You see it's a little rough. Now the slide itself, I don't see any particular signs of trouble here. It, it seems fine. There's not much in the way of like rough machine marks or anything crazy here. The slide actually seems completely adequate. Uh, we do see some streaks of brass here suggesting that they did test fire this at the factory. I haven't fired this gun at all. Uh, it's it's the frame where things really start getting interesting. Let's take a look. Notice all of this. This is all grinding done by hand, like with a Dremel, you know, bubble with a Dremel. Like, just admire that for a moment. Let me see if I can get it to focus a little better for you. Like this, this is this is how it came from the factory. All this grinding here, here, uh, a little bit here. And by the way, this is like after it's been cleaned up a little bit. There were actually like aluminum shards all up in this pistol. Like you, you can pick up splinters, actually. I actually literally did handling this bare frame. It's that bad. Uh, just for comparison's sake, I do have an actual Beretta. And this is an old one that's kind of well-loved. So we do see some finish loss on the rails here. Let me focus. Yeah, so on the surface, you do see the, these bits of finish loss on the rails. But on the inside here, you can see what these you know crisp, sharp edges are supposed to look like. None of this like crazy grinding here. And then the other thing is these lines right here between here and here, they are completely straight. Obviously they should be. And then if you look by comparison, you can see that it starts off straight here, focus. And then it actually takes a dip because they like grind it into here. Like this is their idea of hand fitting. They didn't even bother to like refinish over it. 
they shipped the firearm and they thought that this was an okay thing to send out. Like, that's crazy to me. I don't know. Maybe I've not seen as many things as some other people have, but I've never seen any other manufacturer do this, no matter how budget. Like, this was an okay thing for them to send. I'm sure somebody might argue, oh, it's probably still safe to shoot because this isn't really the pressure bearing parts. Uh, that's mainly in the slide and the uh, barrel of the little locking block. This is why you can have like polymer frame guns. But I mean, how much confidence are you going to have as far as the long term durability if this is the kind of workmanship that's allowed to leave their factory? I mean, again, let me focus on the, uh, the critical area there. To me, this is completely insane, completely unacceptable. I did end up reaching out to Rock Island about it. I'm assuming they're the ones that do the warranty coverage for these. Uh, since they're they're the importer and i haven't heard anything back i sent them photos and all that other stuff it's been a few days uh, if i hear nothing back you know maybe i'll call them up to see if they if they're going to do anything about it uh, like i said they could just argue it's perfectly safe the way it is deal with it i would hope that they're better than that i don't know what their reputation is for customer service um so i guess this is kind of a cliffhanger because i don't you know there's a going to be a part two coming as far as what if anything they do about it and you know, if it's nothing, maybe I'll try shooting it. Like I said, at least for a little while, I'm sure it's probably going to be okay. But I mean, how long is this frame going to hold up? Uh, is it compromised? Any of this sort of stuff? So the lesson here is that uh, this manufacturer apparently is, you know, comfortable, safe, sending out something like this to their consumers. Uh, I would probably avoid these pistols. That was just kind of my advice based on my experience. Ordinarily, I've, I've had a few firearms in the past where they seem completely fine out of the box and then you shoot them enough and then they start developing problems. This is the first one that where, you know, immediately out of the box, I'm already questioning how shootable the firearm is actually going to be. Uh, that's, that's really it for this time around. Thank you for watching, of course, as always. Um, if you want to ask any comments, questions, suggestions, I always, always welcome that sort of thing. Uh, but that's really about it. Thank you.